Hi, this is Tim Santoni, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Kathy Dawson, Daw or Awesome Dawson, as they call you. Welcome right. to the show. Thank so you. So thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Uh, first off, I like to have my guests talk a little bit about themselves and their business, um, so that the viewers have a chance to kind of understand what you do and what makes you go. That's a great question. So 35 years later, I've been doing search and staffing. So I started when I was like 12, and, <laughs> and I've been uh, learning ever since, thank goodness. I have worked since I was 13, which I think makes a big difference. But search and staffing is interesting. It started, in for me anyway, in 1983, and um, it was just about finding temporaries, having a client say, I have a need and I really want somebody to come quickly because I have a big board meeting or I have a project I'm doing and I need extra help. So I thought, wow, there's a lot of people I know that need extra help. And so I thought, well, I'll get into that business. Business. So again, 35 years later, I'm running my own search and staffing firm. It's been 10 years now on my own. And we do three things. We do executive search, middle management, and clerical secretarial. And the reason we do that is so we can be a one-stop shop to everybody. So we'll place like a middle manager, and then we'll take that person and we'll find them an assistant. And then we'll find them an accounting person, and then a controller, and then, and then, and then. And gotcha. that's what we've done. Great. So You've been in the industry for some time, have some experience. What do you? What are the top three mistakes you typically see employers make when it comes to staffing and hiring and recruiting? So the biggest mistake they make is hiring someone they like. <laughs> <laughs> I like this person, so they're gonna work out. Don't do it. Whatever you do, don't do it, because typically the person you like is not necessarily the person that's gonna work best with you. As a matter of fact, the old adage "opposites attract" is sort of the same when it comes to personal relationships as well as business relationships. Right. So don't hire someone you like, although you must like them, right. but you don't want to be their best friend. And the second thing that they make a mistake on is they typically say, "Well, they'll." Pay pick this up once they get here. So they sort of say it's going to be okay. They don't have to have Excel. They don't have to have 10 years in production management or something like that. They say we'll train them because the reality is in today's marketplace, you want them to hit the floor running and they're not going to be trained very easily. They can be trained, but 10 years later is a long time to wait. Right. And the third thing that they typically do is they overhire and over promise. So they'll say, oh, I really want to take my company to the next level. I can't wait until I can do that. And they want to hire someone to help them get there. But then they don't have any of the work done, the preliminary work, to say, what is it that I really want this person to do besides be my number two? What they'll say is, I want them to do projects having to do with growth. I want them to look, visit every customer. But then they don't tie it all together with the team they already have because then they hire that person. The person shows up going, I'm ready to go. And the team's like, Who's that person? I don't want them in my spot. No way, no way. So then you have sort of anarchy amongst the people saying, I don't want to work with that person. So those are the three biggest no, mistakes. No plan for that growth. I just think that one person's going to solve it. Right? Exactly. That's exactly That right. could be good, though. They come back and they need to have more people to, to deal with that, right? That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> you got my business model. There you go. <laughs> So when is it that you typically, that, that maybe a small and growing client would sense that maybe they need help from someone like you or someone on your team and your firm? When, is, when does that kind of light bulb go off? Well, the first thing is they hire their friends and their relatives and they don't work out. So that's the first thing. And the second thing typically is that they try to put an ad somewhere, somehow, some way, and they get all the wrong people. Um, or they get people they think, oh my gosh, it's going to be great, and then they realize, oh no, it's not going to be great, and I'm in big trouble. So um, those typical experiences will have them say, okay, I've got to be doing something wrong. I, I need to be doing something better. How am I going to do that? And a friend or a relative or somebody will say, well, have you tried a re recruiting firm, one that specializes in helping people just like you? Um, and so that's when we get introduced. So once that failure happens and they realize I'm doing something wrong, they can maybe appreciate more of the resources that uh, your firm brings. Yes. Great. Well, I think that in the beginning, they don't really want to pay a fee. The fee scares them away. I always tell clients, if you could, anybody, if you could do this and not have to pay for it, would you consider it? And they go, yeah, of course I would. Well, then why wouldn't you do it? If you aren't going to invest in your own employees and the future growth of your company and you're that tight with money, then there's a problem. You're thinking outside of a real leader box right. and you're thinking more about financial. You're not the controller or the CFO of this process, although you need to be responsible for it. You need to be responsible for helping you find the right people any way you can because if you take the turnover rate and you take what the person's salary is, you're going to spend, I think it's $11 billion a year we spend with turnover issues. That's how much it costs 
companies to spend to make sure they right side that ship once they hire the wrong person. That's a great point. That's a great point. So you've all, you've had success growing your business. I've seen you Orange County Business Journal, uh, <laughs> you know, women owned business, obviously growing. So what are some keys that you found in growing your business? Um, obviously understanding the recruiting side and the people side, but beyond that, maybe give us some tips on, on growth as, you know, as an entrepreneur or a small business owner that's trying to grow. Um, what advice would you give to them? First thing is surround yourself with excellent people, such as yourself. I mean, you and I partner together quite a bit, and the reason why we do is because we trust each other, first of all, and second of all, because I really need you. I mean, even if I didn't trust you, I'd have to use you <laughs> because I need your services, right? So when I hire people, we do background checking with your company, and we, we take uh, great pride in making sure companies know that we use your services as well because you need to outsource so many things as, a, as an employer. So when you're actually bringing somebody on and you're trying to figure figure it out, you really want to make sure that you know who those people are that you need to have around you. So to me, you need someone handling sales, you need someone handling operations, you need somebody handling the comings and goings of your company, you need somebody handling all of the the back, the legalities of the company. So there are five different criteria that we need of key people to help us grow. You know, you are only as good as yourself and the people that you hire. So know who you need to surround yourself by. And if you don't have a, a background checking company or a HR you know, staffing firm, or if you don't have a lawyer, uh, an employment attorney, we can help you get those people. And it's different for everybody, personality-wise. So um, the first thing I did when I opened my own 10 years ago was to make sure I had those five people around me. And that's my recommendation. And if you can't find them, we'll help them, right? We've got great contacts. That's a great point. I think people always are thinking about the direct hires that they have as employees, but also having those partners externally that are gonna support that growth, because you would need attorneys for contract review oh, and yes. other things as you do bigger deals, and to have that. So those five key people, so that's great, it's a great point. Um, so uh, what is it that, you know, on the personal side that you love about the business and, and that you're in and the people that you work with? Well, you know I'm very outgoing and friendly. So I am a middle child of a Catholic family, strong Catholic family. My dad was a chief in the Navy. My mom was a nurse. So there was the blood and sweat and tears of running that family for all those years. And I started working with since I was 13. So I feel like you really need to have that ability to take yourself to the next level. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is from your past and your history and learning and growing with the people. Very good, very good. Okay, now we're going to lightning round. All right. Lightning round. These lightning are quick, round. quick questions. All right. Here, Here we, we go. go. I'm ready. You ready? <laughs> Coffee or tea? Tea. Tea, all right. Cats <laughs> or dogs? Both, but dogs mostly. Dogs mostly. Mostly dogs. I will tell your cats. I breed them. Okay. <laughs> That's why I like them so much. Your favorite app on your smartphone. Oh my gosh, it's got to be the directions. <laughs> You're on the road a lot. You got to find your way. I am always on that, on that app. Yes. Okay. Um, best book you've read in the last twelve months? Always Brian Tracy. I reread and read and reread them because they're so good. And it's all about sales and customer service and how to be better than you were yesterday. Okay. So that was great. So before we go, if someone needs to connect with Kathy Dawson or Dawson and Dawson, how do we find you? Um, well, you can call me on the telephone. I know that's unusual. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have my cell phone close by, I'm sure. Well, we'll, we'll link down your phone number in the in the show notes below, but that's perfect. Great. So, what, besides the telephone, which is kind of a you know a novel thing. <laughs> it is these days. We carry them around in our pockets, but we don't really use them for, for I, making calls. No, it's I think odd. it's more cameras yeah. when we use mine yeah. for. Anyway, uh, we have a website, of course, DawsonDawsonInc.com. No and in between. And we have every, you know, Instagram, Facebook, you name it, we have it. We're very social media savvy. And I'm very excited to say you can just Google in Dawson, Dawson, Mission Viejo, and you'll find us a, a variety of ways. Awesome. Well, Kathy, thanks for joining us on the show. It's Thank been you. Awesome. It was a pleasure. All right. All right bye.